lecture video. So the topic of today will be about multi-stage amplifier. Mm, how can I say this? You know, sometimes uh, one single person cannot do the job so well. Like instead of hire one really big guy to lift heavy stuff, you can just work together, put a bunch of small guy, and you can lift the things. So multi-stage amplifier is the same concept. So let's get to this. So the topic of today is multi-stage amplifier, and the idea is to leverage um, several amplifier to do a bigger amplifying job. So sometimes many is better than one. For example, if you are asked to design amplifier that have the amplification factor to be 1000 that means you're taking an input signal and you produce an output signal which is a thousand times higher in magnitude that's gonna be quite challenging because you're gonna start maxing out all of your hardware requirement however it's easier to make a uh, 10 time or an amplification factor of 10 amplifier. So instead of producing a giant amplifier, you can cascade your signal through three different amplifier with factor of 10. So 10 time, 100 time, 1000 time. Then you have your output signal. Uh, now instead of using one transistor you have to use three transistor but the simplicity I mean the requirement for the hardware will be less so you can easily implement this so there's a trade-off there if you want to use this method and today we will learn about how can you do how you can you design and characterize your multi-state amplifier as you can see in here you can connect different amplifier in a cascade configuration like this and this is done in order to increase overall small signal voltage gain or to provide a voltage gain with a very low output resistance overall voltage or current gain uh, is not simply a product uh, of the individual amplification factor. For example, the gain of stage 1 is a function of the input resistance of stage 2. So in other words, loading effect may be taken into account. So in this lecture, we will try to examine uh, a few different examples. So let's go through one example together. So in this section here, you can see that we have a cascade configuration of two common emitter circuit. The first common emitter circuit is center uh, with our first BJT Q1, and you see the signal, uh, the source signal supply into uh, into this one with. Um, uh, what's that called voltage divider bias circuit right then the second stage is with Q2 I'm gonna cheat a little bit here so if you do the DC analysis on all of the parameter in this circuit you can see that this circuit is uh, acting in forward active mode therefore you can use it as an amplifier so if you want to um, use it as an amplifier, you need to understand um, the amplifier amplification effect of you from this circuit, or you have to figure out what's the voltage gain, right? Uh, in order to do that, um, the first thing first is you have to convert the circuit into the small signal equivalent model. So we can have the small signal equivalent model in here. So if you have the equivalent model here, you can easily find the voltage gain of your multi-stage amplifier. I'm going to cheat a little bit and give the uh, total 
advantage gain of the amplifier here but I want you to see in this this equation the first thing is you have the term GM1 multiplied by RC1 parallel with R pi 2 okay and R pi 2 in this case is actually your I'm sorry RC1 and R pi 2 is these two is still right here okay which come after uh, which come at the output of your first transistor okay then that basically that terms represent uh, the gain of your first transistor the second term is GM2 multiplied by RC2 parallel RL and GM2 RC2 parallel RL represent the gain of your uh, second transistor that's how the resistance with the voltage gain can be cascaded from one transistor to another transistor so in here we have input resistance of the amplifier is ri which is the input resistance here is equal to r1 r2 R1 parallel R2 parallel with R pi 1. The output resistance of the amplifier put back into the collector is RC2. Okay, so at this point it's just RC2. So what I want you to see next is if the independent source Vs is set to zero, we can have v pi equals 0, then v pi 1 equals 0, then gm1 equal, and gm1 v pi 1 equals 0. Then that result will lead to v pi 2 will be equal 0, and gm2 v pi 2 will be equal 0. So every time the signal here change, the result get cascaded down the line also. One last thing, last thing to mention, I put in here is the single stage, that means only one transistor voltage gain of the single stage amplifier. So you can see the similarity, okay. Uh, this uh, R1, R1 parallel R2, uh, R, R pi is basically your input resistance. So technically, when you have three stage, four stage, five stage, all you need to do is multiply the gain of each stage. Then finally, you multiply everything for Ri over Ri plus Rs. Then you can have the final uh, amplification factor for your multi stage amplifier. Let's work through one problem together. So, given this circuit in here, and this problem you can find in the textbook also as problem 6.77, uh, given all the um, parameter of beta 1 and beta 2, which is beta 1 is for transistor Q1 and beta 2 is for transistor Q2, uh, on a VBE is equal to 0 0.7, and there's no early, early effect. Um, I want you to do three things. First of all, you have to find the Q point current collector current for each transistor. You need to find the voltage gain, total voltage gain of this two stage amplifier. And finally, I want you to find the input current, I mean, input resistance at base R, I, B, and the output resistance. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to answer the first question. What is the collector current at Q point for each transistor? So let's see what we know here. Um, 
what I want you to do first is since we don't have a lot of resistor in this circuit so let's focus on analyzing each uh, the current that go through each resistor in here so we will have our I will name it to be uh, R1 and R2 so the I will have the current go through R1 to be 0 0.7 over 0 0.5 why 0 0.7 is technically VBE on of Q2 okay across this one this one divided by the resistance R1 which is 0 0.5 so I have 1.4 milliampere next is I want to uh, know what is the current going through the resistor R2 uh, so basically it's quite sim similar since this is DC so Vs will be equal to 0 from 5 volt okay start with 5 volt I just have to minus the first VBE minus the second VBE then I will have uh, then I can use uh, what can I say um, I'm sorry um, if I want to find the voltage at this point, I have to start with 5 volt minus by the first VB minus by the second VB. Then I have the voltage over here. Then in order to find the current, I use ohms law by dividing that for 50 ohms. So I can have this equation of 5 minus uh, 2 times 0 0.7 because it's 2 times divided by 0 0.05 then the current IR2 will be equal to 72 milliampere. So next, I want to understand all of the current going in and out of this notch. So I have uh, emitter current number one going to this notch, emitter current number two going to this notch. Then I have the base current number two going out of the first knot I have our collector current of interest collector current of interest right let's see what do we know about each of this parameter so for the emitter current okay you can use k cup current lower so first of all let's start with uh, emitter current number one which is here so emitter number current number one Coming in, there's two current coming out. The first one is IR1, the second one is IB2. So, emitter current number one, IE1, is equal to the sum of this current and this current. Therefore, you have the equation of IE1 equal to IR1 plus IB2. Next, let's analyze the second node with. Uh, K curve current lower. So emitter current coming in plus another IR1 coming in, then total of IR2 coming out. Therefore, emitter current number two, IE2, can be equal to IR2 subtracted by IR1. Then I have this equation here. Once, if I can, as I mentioned before, for Q point, if you can find one number, you can easily find another number. Therefore, IB1, uh, is, you can relate I, the base current IB1 to the emitter current IB1 by the factor of 1 over beta, beta plus 1, similar for the second transistor. And finally, our value of interest, uh, IC, uh, is, can be related to IE by the factor of beta over beta plus 1. So, what do we know here and where should we start? Okay, so up here, we know the value of IR1 and IR2. So, in, six, in these six equations, we saw that this equation of IE2 contain both IR1 and IR2. Therefore, we can first figure out our emitter current number two, 
IE2. Uh, we plug in the number and we have the answer of 70.6 milliampere. Next, we move along. Okay, we can easily find the base current of the transistor number two. Uh, plug in all the number, we have it to be uh, 871.6 microampere. Then we plug in the number for IBE2. Then we can have our first answer of collector current. Number two is uh, 69.73. Uh, noting that we actually use um, the value of beta 2 for this number and beta 2 is 80 so next since we figure out uh, IB2 we can go back to the top here okay we can plug in the number for IB2 and IR1 then we can have the emitter current number one to be 2.2716 milliampere. We move along the line since nobody asked for um, IB1, we can skip it for now and we can go straight to our answer IC1 to be equal to 2.253 milliampere. And that is the answer for your uh, first question. So first of all, we need to convert everything to this happy pi mod model, okay? And okay, the VS we can connect it to ground. Um, and the uh, output, I'm gonna place a holder here for the output, okay? So first, we need what we need to do is we need to figure out of our happy pi model. I mean, happy pi parameter. So, GM1, GM2, uh, Pi1, uh, Pi2, I have all the equation here for you guys. Now just plug in the number and calculate each of them. Okay, after you have uh, everything, now you move to the next step. Um, first thing first, you have to find your, uh, your expression for your input. Remember, if you want to find again, find the expression for input output then divide the output for input then you have the gain so um your how can you know your resource basically resource is from here to here right and it's gonna be equal to um the voltage from this point to this point plus the voltage from this point to this point plus the voltage from this point to this point okay and that whole swing is your V source Vs. So from here to here is V pi one. From here to here is V pi two. And from here to here is output voltage V O. So we can also derive an expression for our V O. Um, we can use Ohm's law, so V equal IR on this resistor here. Okay, so we know that um, R is 50 ohm, that's piece of cake, and I, this current, uh, is coming from two other current. The first current is here, and the second current is here. So the first current is quite easy. You already have it, which is GM2 multiplied by V pi 2. So we put that in here. The second current, you can trace it back on the way to this point. So current coming into this point and current coming into this point is actually equal. Therefore, the second current path, you can make it equal to this current plus the current going through this resistor and that's why you have uh, gm1 v pi 1 plus the current going through this resist resistor v pi 1 over r pi 1 okay 
right, next is we can find an expression for vpy2 and vpy2 technically you just need to use Ohm's law again okay so vpy2 equal to the current across this two resistor uh, multiplied by the parallel of the two resistor right so you know that the current going through both of here equal to this group so you can just copy and paste this term here multiplied by uh, r pi 2 parallel with 0 0.5 k ohms then what you can do what you can do is plugging off number you punch the number out what happened is that now you can relate v pi 2 to v pi 1 um, after you do that um, you can plug this one back into this equation okay plug this v so basically in expressing v pi 2 in terms of v pi 1 in this equation punch in, punch in of the number simplify it then you can relate v pi 0 i mean sorry v pi 0 back to v pi 1 okay now you have one equation for to make v pi 2 become v pi 1 and another v equation to relate v pi 0 to v pi 1 therefore you can plug this two equation into this equation up here and generate an equation that relate vs to v pi 1 now you have an expression for vs um, in relation to v pi 1 an expression for vo in relation to v pi 1 so you divide this equation or this equation to get your voltage gain and this is your voltage, the voltage gain that you are looking for and finally we need to find our uh, input resistance and output resistance RIB and RO so for RIB okay what if, how can we find RIB so technically it's just uh, the voltage coming in divided by the current coming in so voltage divided you use, you use the ohm's law okay so you use vs which is the voltage from here to here on the way divided by uh, um, is okay and is is um, then you, you can find is 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 basically the current going through this resistor okay coming in so you can express is as v pi 1 over r pi 1 also on floor okay now what you need to do is look at this equation here you have vs over v pi 1 over r pi 1 right you know r pi 1 uh, you don't know vs you don't know uh, v pi 1 so what you can do is actually make this make these two cancel out so if you can write express v pi 1 in terms of vs then you can cancel out the two times okay so i just sorry for the graphic i was supposed to put the equation up then take it out but anyway if you use if you trace back to your previous slide you can see that you you already derived an equation for v pi 1 relating to vs um, so now i just have to you have to rearrange it a little bit switch the two times then you can express v pi 1 in terms of vs you can plug it in here and you plug in your r pi 1 then you have your result now for uh, ro so what you need to do first for ro is output resistance okay so if you have to imagine you're gonna couple you're gonna couple a voltage which is vx in here and because you couple that voltage there's a current coming in to that there's a current coming in to this knot which is ix 
So what is the what is RO? RO is basically the resistance you can see from at this point. Look at the pointer here, and it's gonna be equal to Vx over Ix from floor. So first of all, um, we have to we have to start with somewhere. So let's start with uh, the current across this this resistor. The current across this resistor can be written as Vx over 50 ohms. Okay, so I have that term. If I use K curve current law, that current is equal to the sum of three current. The one coming from Vx, the one coming from uh, this dependent current source from uh, the second transistor and this whole current branch here so the one coming from Vx is Ix the one coming from up here is GMP pi 2 and the one coming from this branch we already discussed that the sum of this current and this current that's why you have these terms okay you plug in off the necessary number Remember that you already have this equation from from previous slide, so plug that in. Uh, convert uh, R pi two into I mean V pi two into V pi one, and now you have this relationship. So look at this equation here. What you want is actually you want an equation with only V x and I x because if you have that equation. You can actually derive the ratio between them, right? If you can derive the ratio between Vx and Ix, then you can find your output resistance. So let's look at another loop. So if you look at this whole loop here, now you can see that okay, K cup on this lower, you can have uh, V pi one plus v pi 2 plus v x equals 0 okay similar to when you put the source in it's the same um, but anyway you plug in, in this equation in here then you can write v pi 1 in terms of v x then you use this equation plug it back in here what happened is now you can rewrite this equation in terms of only v x and i x you move this term over, you move this term over, and you do some magical arrangement. Okay, and you can have this. Then finally, uh, you just have to divide Ix. You have to move. Um, okay, so now you can just derive your our output, output resistance. And this is the end of our lecture today. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys can have a good weekend. If you want to practice more, there's a problem called 6.76 in the textbook. Uh, you can solve this problem and in the back of the book, there is answer for the, for the problem. So you can check it out also to see if you have the correct answer or not. Uh, Hi, so this is the end of our lecture today. I hope you guys all have a good weekend. Um, I will see you guys next time. Bye.